evening on this the second week in January as we celebrate tomorrow the feast of St. Peter, the confession of St. Peter, our patron saint. Welcome back to Even Song from St. Peter's and our opening hymn is number 94 which tells of the new year, it speaks to the dedicating oneself to the new year.
O Lord, open thou our lips. <coughs> and our mouth shall so forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Psalm 40, verses 1 to 12. I waited patiently upon the Lord. He stood to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the desolate pit, out of the mire and clay. He set my feet upon a cliff and made my footing sure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are they who trust in the Lord. They do not resort to evil spirits or turn to false gods. Great things are they that you have done. O Lord, my God, how great your wonders and your plans for us. There is none who can be compared with you. Oh, that I could take them known and tell them. But there are more that I can count. In sacrifice and offering, you take no pleasure. You have given me ears to hear you. Burnt offering and sin offering, you have not required. And so I said, Behold, I come. In the roll of the book, it is written concerning me. I love to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is deep in my heart. I proclaim righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I do not restrain my lips, and that, O oh Lord, you know. Your righteousness have I not hidden in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your deliverance. I have not concealed your love and faithfulness from the great congregation. You are the Lord. Do not withhold your compassion from me. Let your love, your faithfulness keep me safe forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. 
A reading from the word of God, written in the book of Isaiah, chapter 49, beginning at the first verse. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you shall be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the redeemer of Israel and his holy one, to one deeply despised and abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Cain shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The hymn number 659. Lamb of God, I look to thee.
my soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sight empty away. He remembering his mercy hath helped his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed, forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is taken from John chapter 1, begin to read at the 29th verse. John saw Jesus come in towards him and declared, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he who, of whom I said, after he comes, a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I come, but I came baptizing with water for this reason that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he on whom you see the spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. And when Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translate means teacher, where are you, go where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak, spoke, speak and followed him with Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, with Simon Peter's brother. He first he first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which means Peter, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, now let us know thy servant departed peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, 
and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. <clears throat> Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. And he sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save our nation. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only you, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people illuminated by the word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Jesus's glory, that he may be known, worshiped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. To Jesus Christ, our Lord, if you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty Father, who inspired Simon Peter, first among the apostles, to confess Jesus as Messiah and Son of the living God, keep your church steadfast upon the rock of this faith, so that in unity and peace we may proclaim the one truth and fellow follow the one Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just who proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, 
and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of thy only son our savior jesus christ amen the lord be with you and also with you let us bless the lord thanks be to god May the divine assistance remain with us always, and may the souls of the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The hymn now, number 783, Forsaken Once and Twice Denied. <laughs> The theme this evening given is God's spirit of invitation. As I've twisted it around a bit and coined simply God's invitation. God continues to invite us. In the words of St. John's Gospel, the first chapter, verse 39, he said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. He said to them, come and see. The initials are SVP are so familiar to us. We see them all around. Responds a uh, civil play. 
simply saying in the French, in the use of the French language, in English, please respond. Many of us forget to respond, however. I we put things in a, in a quandary because we've not responded and yet we turned up. And they have what two extra people or one extra person to cater for. But let's think about it. How often do we see the French language or any other language coming into our own English language? And somebody recently was saying that we as people who speak English, no, I said, as people who speak English, not as English, as people who speak English, that we borrowed a lot of language from the French. I can throw it out to you this evening. What are some of the phrases that we have from French in particular? and from other languages that we use in the English language. I can think, I can start you off by thinking about some. Uh, someone said that the French gave us a great meal. Let me think about a la carte, a maitre d'. Let me think about um, lots of things with, with dining and wine. We're able to pull them together. Maybe I've set you thinking and some of you can, um, Re respond by using some of these phrases that are used commonly in English, borrowed from French or even Latin. We think of Latin via media and in the middle way, like Anglicans. We think in also from Latin, et tu brute, you tu brutus. And we can go on um, to use other phrases, but I'm picking from you. What phrases that we are able to um, coin? You can pull me off the screen and so we can see everybody. And people can put use the hand or just say, indicate you're coming on and give your phrase. Coup d'etat, another French phrase. The bad, uh, the bad core. Any other phrases? Wow, we're quiet. This is Christmas rest. Any other phrases from French or Latin? I don't see anybody, I don't hear any person coming up with phrases. I was hoping to get a litany. Well, check it out. You can see how many phrases. Deja vu. De Deja vu, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. No, this is Brandon. Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, what was the question? Yeah, that response question. What are some of the other phrases which are coined, which are, which come from the French language, and are used by us in the, the English language in the everyday setting? Rendezvous. Rendezvous. Yeah. Déjà vu. Um. I was going to say barbecue, but you know, barbecue is one of those African ones that we, we call in from Africa, and they are mainly French too. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Um, what's, what's thank you? Mercy. Mercy. Merci yeah. beaucoup. Yeah, mercy. Mm -hmm. um, mercy. Chocolate. Yeah. Brandon again. Now in my back. <laughs> Pardon? What's Brandon saying? Merci chocolate. The chocolate. Yeah, go ahead. What's Any other person? B. Pardon? Say la vie. Isn't it that doesn't it mean that's life? Say yeah, la vie. Say la vie. Okay. Say la vie. Yeah. Say la vie. Say vous play. Say vous play. Yeah. If you please. Yeah. Go ahead. Bonjour. 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 Yeah. Bonjour. 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 Um, Profits are pounders, um, landlord. Oh, well, that's, uh -huh. good. that's a new one there. Okay, yes, Brandon, <laughs> landlord. I can't call it. <laughs> Quasi stationary, cul de sac. Keep going. Mon Dieu. Pardon? Mon Dieu. Mon Dieu. What's that? What, what it means? My God. My God, okay. Mm hmm. Ad hoc, Father. Ad hoc, yes, correct, good, yeah, ad hoc. And de facto. De facto, yes. 
Mm -hmm. What else? Um, bona, bona fide, bona fide. Bona appetite. Bona fide. The accord. Hmm? Pardon? The accord. Agreed. Uh huh. The accord, yeah. Mm hmm. Go ahead. Bourgeoisie. Bourgeoisie. Grand petit. Grand. Grand, grand petit. Petit petit. The name. Status quo. Status quo. Yeah, that sounds Latin. Yeah, status quo. Yeah, that's Latin. Latin. Latin yes. Status quo. Mm -hmm. But the, the whole purpose of the exercise is to realize that we've borrowed so many phrases and words from other languages. And I'm sure that the other languages, like other peoples have boy of borrowed some of our words also and some of our phrases. Not only the lewd ones, but they use a lot of English phrases. And you hear um, Jesus who invites the disciples, these two disciples, to come and see, to respond to the call. They're asked to take on the challenge of following him. In this episode, Jesus issues an invitation to these two individuals who show interest in his whereabouts. And it's the question, it's not just asking him, where are you staying? But they're asking a deeper question. They're seeking to find out what he's about, what he's offering, what he has to put on the table. So they're searching for more. Jesus recognizes this. And John, uh, in writing the gospel, does a tremendous job, an important job, in presenting Jesus to his followers as he inspires them to look or better rendered, to behold uh, the Lamb of God, to look, look carefully. And he points them to the Lamb of God. He points them to Jesus. He points them to the one who is mightier than himself. And he does a great job in selling Jesus and talking about Jesus so that the disciples, having heard about Jesus, don't really defect, but are able to go to John, or able to go to, from John to Jesus, knowing that, that's what is wanted. That Jesus now takes the line like Jesus is a war and they've come to serve. And Jesus is open with them as he goes on in chapter 14 to say it, to describe his, himself as the way, the truth, and the life. And John and Jesus, as they channel these individuals, as the invitations are being offered, the invitation to follow him. And this invitation comes to us so often in our lives to follow Jesus. From this invitation, the question, the question comes, or from this invitation comes an opportunity for Jesus to demonstrate his ability to enter into a lasting relationship with them and with us. Come and see. And he presents himself. He responds, his response is simply to challenge them to make the effort challenge them to move on from where they were, to take the step, to continue and experience what he's offering to the world, what he has to offer, to continue in their curiosity by seeking to find out what Jesus has to offer to them in their lives. It is perhaps exceedingly good advertising. And we find many modern day um, companies and individuals who pattern themselves after Jesus and who are able to offer their services and goods to us in this world. And even without knowing it, we find ourselves impressed. We find ourselves caught up as we watch television during the course of the day, as we um, go through our emails and all the ad advertisements that come to us, that we're being caught, we're caught in the system. Even the music catches us, the, the, the jingles and all these things, which are attractive and they appeal to us. And Jesus appeals to these young men as they're going about their business, as they're following John, Christ Jesus makes an appeal to them and they respond. The invitation by Jesus is to come and see, come and make the effort, come and participate. 
the flamboyant colors, or everything that is happening in our lives seem to stimulate us and the fascinating language. And we think about the use of the French language as we began and the Latin phrases and the French phrases that we use, which make our language colorful and it describes some important things in our lives, some important and critical events in our lives. That we step out of the out of our um, beyond our boundaries, we just step out from where we are in our language, and we pull from another language. We draw in from another people their own expressions, and they give it a gift, and it gives to us a freshness, a newness in what we are trying to say. That we're able to put something very simple. Or if we use English, it comes very simple. We talk with a maitre d, or when you talk about um a la carte dining and all these things. It makes the dining seem impressive. The, the meal is an impressive meal. You know, when we talk with random view and all these things that we meet people that, that sort of way. That we make the language, we make episodes more um, powerful and more demanding. And Jesus, as he makes his call, it's not just um, invitation, which he gives to issues just um, using the fear, I think it's Carol Blanc. He just, he just says, come and see. He invites them to come and visualize, come and experience. And it's not just coming and um, being there, but he calls on them to come and participate. And it is an invitation for them to learn more, to explore, to develop their minds, that he has something to offer, something great. And it is in following him that they're able to respond, they're able to recognize the greatness of the man. They're able to see for themselves uh, these two disciples, one being Andrew, and the other being same, uh, the other uh, uh, Andrew calling his brother Simon and saying to him, we found the Lord. And the important experiences that are now open to Simon. As Simon was now being called Peter. And today, tomorrow we celebrate the feast of the confession of St. Peter, beginning in what we know to be Christian Unity Week. But how Peter's life exploded, Peter's life took off in coming into contact with Jesus. He was no longer that little fisherman um, who was quick-tempered, but he learned to temper his, his, his own expressions. He, he, he learned how to communicate. An individual who walked away and said, I don't know the man at the death of Jesus on the cross, but in the context of this trial, the individual who began to sink matures into a more dynamic personality and is able to defend the church at Pentecost, defend the Christians at Pentecost. In that memorable speech when he says, these men are not drunk, they're not filled with wine because it's early in the day. And the individual who was able to take on the mandate and the responsibility the invitation by Jesus to carry the message of the gospel of, uh, further, carry it into the world. And these two feast days coming up, the feast of the conversion of St. Peter, or the confession of St. Peter, and then a week later, the conversion of St. Paul. It brings these two individuals that we celebrate together. Don't forget that later on in the year, on the 29th of June, we will celebrate the feast, not of St. Peter, but it's of St. Peter and St. Paul, vital to us. These two individuals who steer the church, who take it from uh, its early be beginnings, who respond to the invitation by Jesus, and Paul who responds by um, within the context of the conversion, the, his conversion on the road of on the way to um, Damascus. And St. Paul was able to recognize the little niche which is there for him to carry the gospel and present it to the Gentiles. So we celebrate those two, we bring them together, we merge them together. And they're like um, two individuals who are, are, are experiencing Christianity together. They were, although they didn't see eye to eye, you know, realize that, they, that there was conflict between them, but they were able to merge in following the invitation by Jesus to follow him. The disciples responded by, to the invitation and the response is immediate within the context of St. John's Gospel. But if you go back to St. Matthew's Gospel, we hear an emphasis on that immediately, that straight away, these individuals were responding to the call. It was a call to grow in fellowship, to be nurtured 
um, by Jesus, to encounter Jesus in totality and to abide with him, to spend time with him. Jesus invites them, not just therefore to come and see, but he invites them to come and experience it. Experience it. How we as Barbadians put forward some of our, um, like Harrison's Cave and some of our, um, some of our attractions, the Nicholas Abbey train ride, that there are experiences that you have to come and see coming into the Caribbean as tourists this time of the year. You're coming to experience the sea and all these things that we have to offer. And Jesus, as he calls them, as he invites them, as God through God is inviting them to leave their relationships with John, to leave their relationship with family, as we see in the call of the disciples and other um, in the other gospels, to leave all behind and follow him. And that call to follow Jesus. Have you ever received an invitation and turned it down? Sometimes it's embarrassing that we turn down invitations. Persons might look at us and ask us why we didn't turn up. Or how have we received the invitation to follow Jesus? As Jesus says to the disciples, come and see. How have we received that invitation? Have we put him on hold? Are we guilty of ignoring him? Ignoring the call, and we find ourselves so often making excuses that we're not able to do it, we don't have the time, we work, work is too difficult, we don't have the time to do these things. How often we're tempted to avoid that experience, but when we take it on, we find it so enriching, we find it a marvelous experience the experience of following Jesus. As these initial disciples, these early disciples, to come on the challenge. As he said to them, come and see. And they came and saw where he was staying and they remained with him that day. Let us, as we go through our this period of adjustment, seek to remain with him. Seek to continue to be his guest at his banquet as we share in his body and blood. As we share in the fellowship of Christ in his church that we continue to grow in love for Jesus, our Lord and Savior. To this God now, we glory, remaining in power, this night and forevermore. Amen. God's spirit of invitation. The hymn now, the other St. Peter hymn, number 784, Thou art the Christ, O Lord, the Son of God, most high.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us depart in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a landing to our feet, a light to our path, and a strength to our lives. We thank you, O oh God, for the expression of love in our lives. We thank you for calling each one of us by name to serve you in his, your church and in the world. Thank you for calling men like Peter and Paul to take on the mandate and responsibility of leadership in the church. We pray for unity within the different denominations in the church, unity within our homes and our families, Drive far to fear the enemy and let the Holy Spirit be always there to direct us. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in the love and knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest with many of us and all we love this night and forevermore. Amen. The doxology. A doxology. Good evening to everyone. I hope we continue to Google and to check for those French words and phrases that become part of the English language, and almost English as it were. Again, good night to everyone. I hope you've enjoyed. I think we have, Gear is on, he has to get home. He's still at work. So thank all of you who have come in this evening and welcome back. And we look forward to um, 